All right, so I left off in the last video just rewriting the question for what is the lattice energy of MgF2 solid given delta H sublimation, ionization energy, second ionization energy, bond energy, electron affinity, and delta H of formation. Well, then we made sense of all of that information and wrote the equation in lattice energy part two. And I stopped saying, okay, well, to form magnesium fluoride solid from its elements in the naturally occurring state. Remember that magnesium's naturally occurring state is a solid. Fluorine, those atoms don't exist on their own. They bond together as a diatomic element. So fluorine's naturally occurring element is F2. And the delta H of formation was 1,124 kilojoules per mole. And now what we need to do is use Hess's law to calculate the lattice energy. And remember that the lattice energy is magnesium ions in the gaseous state to the magnesium fluoride solid. And that gives us our lattice energy. So Hess's law, what is Hess's law? Okay, you remember that if you flip an equation, then delta H becomes just negative. If you were to multiply a chemical equation by two, then you multiply the delta H by two. So um, if I wanted to say two fluorine atoms plus two electrons gives two fluoride anions, then the delta H for that process would be negative 328 times two. And I like to think of this as, okay, if we've got a reaction like a log burning, you put one log in, you have a certain amount of heat released. If you put two logs in, you get twice as much heat released. And then the opposite reaction is how much heat would be absorbed. So if it's released, delta H is negative. If heat is absorbed, delta H is positive. If you flip a reaction, you have to change the sign on the delta H. Hess's law is really convenient that you can take reactions that are known, flip them around, and add them up, and get a new equation. So we can actually figure out how to manipulate these equations to form this equation for lattice energy. And what I do is when so I've got this information, I say, okay, well, magnesium fluoride solid, that's a product. I want to keep that a product. So let's don't touch this reaction. Just okay, we know the delta H formation is negative 1124. Fluorine right here is a product. We want it as a reactant. So I will flip that reaction and say, well, the opposite reaction, the delta H, is a positive 328. All right, now F, we're going to want to cancel both of those out because it's not in our final lattice energy equation. So I don't know how I want to flip that yet, but let's go ahead and look at this equation. All right, magnesium cations, I want to keep that in my final reaction, so I would flip this and say, okay, well, the delta H of the opposite reaction would be negative 1451 so that that way those magnesium 2 plus cations would be a reactant not a product. Now we want to get the fluor fluoride oh, we've already got the fluoride anion remember we flipped it magnesium cation we flipped it and then that one we know we're going to keep the same so I'm going to redraw those and then see what we need to do with the other equations. So we've flipped this equation, delta H was 159 kilojoules per mole. I've written it down flipped, so our delta H will be a negative 159 kilojoules per mole. So this allows us to cancel out the F2 gas. F2 gas, we're long, we're almost there, but wait a minute. We've got two F gases there and two right here. So this is where, again, Hess's law, this is all part of Hess's law, but we want to multiply this whole reaction by two. So we'll redraw it and say, okay, well, two F minus gas yields two F gas plus two electrons, and the delta H is positive 328 times 2 kilojoules per mole. And I'll just cross this out so that I remember that I have redrawn it. 
I'm not dealing with that equation anymore. And now we have to remember, oh, we had canceled out one electron there, so we still we only have one electron. Um, like this one electron only cancels out that one electron. Two canceled, those two canceled. So now we're left with magnesium solid plus magnesium ions plus fluorine ions give you magnesium fluoride plus magnesium ions and one electron. Okay, we want to get rid of that electron. We want to get rid of the magnesium plus one. And hey, we go back to our original given and we've got these two equations. Well, our magnesium cations are a product here. Well, they're also a product there. So we're going to want to flip this equation. Mg plus plus one electron gives Mg gas delta H is equal to negative 738 kilojoules per mole. And now we'll see that, okay, this magnesium cancels. That extra electron cancels and now we're left with magnesium cations plus our fluoride anions in the gaseous state. Oh, we still have a magnesium solid in here. So we need to get rid of the magnesium solid. So we'll go back and look at our original equations. Oh yeah, that Mg solid to Mg gas. Remember the sublimation delta H? Well, we want to get rid of the magnesium solid. So we'll flip this reaction and show Mg gas going to Mg solid. The delta H is negative 146 kilojoules per mole. And now we can cancel the magnesium solid. That cancels and we're left with this magnesium gas which was right over here. So those cancel. So now all we've done is just redrawn the equations, flipping them to be able to get our target lattice energy reaction where magnesium cations are a reactant, two fluoride anions react to form magnesium fluoride solid. And here's our magnesium fluoride solid. So we're saying okay, magnesium cations plus magnesium fluoride anions give you magnesium fluoride solid. And all we have to do now is just add up all those delta H's and we'll get the delta H for the lattice energy. So I've taken all those delta H's in kilojoules per mole after I'd already flipped them the correct way and now I just add them up. And I added all those up and I get 3,618 kilojoules per mole and then don't forget the positive portion plus 656 and then I get 2,962. And that would be the lattice energy in negative 2,962 kilojoules per mole because you have a negative number plus a positive number and you've got now your lattice energy in a negative term and again that's defining it as going from the gas state to the solid. If we flip this reaction and define the lattice energy as some textbooks do as the energy required to go from the solid to the gas ions then you would have had opposite of all of these delta H's. It just, it'd be the same thing mathematically, it's just you would have had a positive term on all of these numbers and a negative term on that, but you still get the same numeric value for the lattice energy of magnesium fluoride. So I just solved this problem. It was basically what it is is the Born-Haber cycle, but I just used Hess's law because I find that's sometimes the easiest way 